In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a workflow to design a building pad at a given elevation and then construct a slope from the top of that building pad which will intersect with an existing terrain model. I'm working in a 2D file and I have attached a reference file which contains my terrain model. And so shown here is my existing terrain model. So the first step is just to design and lay out the building pad. And I'll do that using horizontal geometry tools. And I'm just going to create a very simple building pad here. So I'm just going to use the line between points command. So I'll go ahead and start that command. You're going to want to set a feature definition for that as well as give that a name. Once you have that set up, you can just data point to create the sides of your building pad. And once you're done with that, you have the footprint for your building pad. The next step is to complex these separate elements together into one complex geometry element. And to do that, I'll use the command complex by elements. Again, I'm going to set a feature definition and give that a name. Then I'll just go out and select the elements that I want to add into this complex element. So I'll select the first and the remaining three. When I'm finished, I'll just data point to accept that. And now you can see I have one complex element here named building pad, which represents the footprint. Now remember, I created this in a 2D file. So at this point, there is no profile or elevation associated with this building pad. It's simply a 2D element. So what I want to do is assign an elevation to this. And I already know that I want my elevation to be 299 for this building pad. So I'll go over into my vertical geometry tool set. And there are a lot of different commands that I could use here, but the easiest one in this situation, because I want it to be at a constant elevation, is to use the tool profile by constant elevation. Once again, you're going to want to select a feature name and select an element template for this new profile that you're creating. You'll notice the heads up prompt asks me to locate my element, so I will do that. Since there's only one element here, I'm going to reset to end that. And now I'll key in my elevation of 299 and data point to accept that. Now that I've created my 2D footprint of the building pad, as well as assigned an elevation to that, if we go over and look in our 3D model, and we'll fit the view and also take a look at it in an isometric view, you can see here that I have my terrain model displayed as well as the building pad. If we snap to that, you can see it has the elevation of 299. So now let's begin to create the slope. Let's so we'll go back into the 2D view. And what we want to do next is project a slope from the top of this building pad down to where it intersects with our terrain model. And as a result, we'll have a feature created out here which will represent the catch line. So it'll be the intersection of the slope with the terrain model. For that, we'll use a command here located in the 3D geometry section called create 3D by slope to target. Now there's a lot of different options that you can fill out here and some you can do here uh, with the heads up display. Some you're going to want to preset here. First we'll set our slope option and we want to set that to terrain model. So that's what we want to intersect. We can set our cut fill option here to cut and fill, cut only, or fill only. 
in this case the elevation of the pad is above our terrain model so we're only going to be in fill so I'll select fill only and then you're going to set the slopes so for my fill slopes start and end I'm going to set that to 50 percent corner option will be set to rounded and transition type is set to constant and as always I want to select a feature definition and give this new feature a name and I'm going to call it catch line. So now looking back at the heads up display we're going to go ahead and just accept some of the options that we've already specified in the dialog box. So to do that I'll data point here to select the slope option. I'm prompted to locate the reference element. Now I'm prompted to select the terrain so I'll go out and select my existing terrain can see here you're selecting the cut fill option and now you're selecting which side so if you move to the outside here it designates that as the left side once I move to the inside you'll see that switch to right so it's going to be the left side now you can see the the features start to come into view here now I'm prompted to select my start location for the new feature that I'm creating. I'm going to click the Alt button and just lock that into the start and data click to accept that and I'm going to do the same thing for the end. I'll click the Alt button and lock us into the end there and now I'll data point to accept the design. So you can see this new feature has been created. It is a 3D feature meaning that it does have an elevation associated with that. If we take a look at that in 3D there you have the top of your building pad and your catch line. Now we still haven't created the slope here but that's very simple to do. We're just going to create a new terrain model which represents our design surface and again we'll go back into the 2D view and under the terrain model tool set I'm going to select create from elements. I'll select a feature definition for my new terrain model and a name for the new terrain model that I'm going to be creating. And now we'll turn again to the heads up display and locate the elements that we wish to add. I'll reset when I'm done. I'm going to set that feature type to a break line edge method to none and once I complete the command you can see that a new terrain model has been created and again we can look at this in 3D and it will give you a clear picture here of the slope and exactly what's going on here so these are the contours being displayed if we wanted to go into this terrain model and display the triangles we could do that as well. So now you can see a representation of the terrain model that's been created. So let me switch back over to the 2D view once again and I'm going to change the terrain model display back to where just the contours are displayed and I want to show you the beauty of the open roads technology here let's say that you know we've gone in we've designed this building pad to be at an elevation of 299 the slope has been created this catch line has been constructed everything is looking great and then we're told that we need to raise the building pad in the past you would have had to uh, come back in and redesign this slope but because this element here in open roads is ruled to this element you can create a new slope for this building pad and all of this will dynamically update this slope will be maintained and the train model will be updated to reflect this new elevation so let me just show you how that would work so this is at 299 but now let's say we're told that this needs to be at an elevation of 302 we'll go into the vertical geometry tools and again I'm going to use this profile by constant elevation and I'm going to create a new feature and we'll just call this new pad elevation. 
I'll locate the element. I'll reset to end that. And I'm going to enter a new elevation here of 302 and data point to accept that. Now nothing updates yet because remember we've created a new profile for this. So I want to go into my profile view for this building pad. And you can see here that I have the original profile which was at 299. Now I have this new profile at 302. When you take a look at this 299 and hover over it and bring up the context toolbar here, you can see that it is the active profile. But now we want this 302 to be the active profile. So let's go ahead and click that. You'll see everything process and update. You see we raised this, the slope was expanded, and now with one tool there we've changed the elevation of this and it's just as easy to go in reverse. Let's say the client has changed their mind again and they determine, oh, we really did want that to be at an elevation of 299. You simply go back into your profile, select this plan element, bring up this profile view, and reset your 299 to active. And as soon as I click that, be watching and you'll see the, the slope automatically update. So there you go. So there's some great tools in here for modeling sites. Uh, this is just one of them and the simplest of examples, but there is quite a lot of, of power in this Open Roads technology for design changes.